If you've owned a Tesla or an EV, you'll soon come to find out that there are a lot of variables that affect the EPA estimated range. My Model Y is EPA rated for 330 miles, but the real life range really varies based on how I'm driving and other conditions. You may be asking yourself, what are some ways that you can maximize your rated range and what are some things to keep in mind while driving to improve your efficiency? So in today's video, I'll be showing you the top 10 things that I do that actually works on maximizing your range and improving your efficiency. And with the winter season right around the corner, these top 10 things might come in handy. Some of these things may seem like no brainers, but they actually help tremendously. If you were like me when you first took delivery of your Tesla, you probably kept opening the Tesla app on your phone to check in on your Tesla and just to admire it. I came to find out that every time I open the Tesla app, it wakes the car. Your Tesla has a sleep mode that enables it to conserve battery when it's not in use. So basically, every time when you open your Tesla app, you're using a little bit of energy to do so. The car will wake itself up in order to send you the updated information that you see on the Tesla app. If you do this several times a day, you'll start to notice your range slightly decreasing, but it can significantly add up, especially when you're on a pinch for range. Another thing that you can do that significantly helps with maximizing your range and efficiency is to precondition your Tesla before you get in it during the colder times. Tesla has a precondition option within the app and it's recommended that you precondition your car before driving. This will bring the battery up to its optimum temperature and avoid too much range loss from happening. You can preheat your car by activating preconditioning or defrost in the Tesla app or the center touchscreen. This will save significant energy on the road when you're preconditioning while you're plugged in. You can also set a schedule to when your Tesla is preconditioned by through either your center touchscreen or the Tesla app. The intention of preconditioning is to raise the temperature of your Tesla's battery to an appropriate temperature while it's plugged in prior to you driving it. It's also recommended that you precondition your vehicle before supercharging to minimize the amount of time you spend there since your battery would already be warmed up to charge faster. During the colder months, I would recommend that you consider leaving your Tesla plugged in when the temperature drops. When you have your Tesla preconditioned, it will use the energy from the charging source as opposed to your battery to warm up the cabin and the battery for optimal performance. Limiting the use of your heater is another way to maximize your range and to improve your efficiency. In your traditional internal combustion engine vehicle, it simply uses a radiator to blow some of the engine's waste heat into the cabin. Basically, the way that a traditional vehicle's heater normally works is that it has a small radiator called a heater core that is plumbed into the engine's cooling system. The heater core is then placed in the interior of your car, behind the dashboard, and requires hoses to and from the engine bay cooling system. So the heater system works when the engine is running and it creates heat. Usually this heat is dispersed to the outside air through the radiator and coolant. The water pump pushes the coolant through the cooling system. The air going through the heater core becomes hot air to heat up the passenger area of the vehicle. For Teslas, however, they have a heat pump. Before this, Tesla used electrical resistance to generate heat. Instead of the electric resistance heating system, Tesla's heat pump basically transfers heat from a source of heat into a thermal reservoir. In simpler words, it works as an air conditioner, but in reverse. In ACs, the heat is trapped inside an area using a refrigerant and then thrown outside. In the case of a heat pump, it works in the same way, but there is a reverse valve that moves the hot air back inside. So this heat for Teslas isn't free like your internal combustion engine vehicle. The heated seats and heated steering wheel are excellent ways to help you conserve energy to maximize your range. Heated seats use electricity too, but they use very little because they are in physical contact with your body. The heated steering wheel works the same way. They heat your hands directly and subsequently the heat transfer is more efficient than if you only had hot air blowing over from the cabin heater. In case you were wondering, I personally turn on the heater when I'm cold along with the heated seats and heated steering wheel and then adjust it from there once I get warmed up. Just do what makes you comfortable honestly. Hey guys, real quick, be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on post notifications to stay updated on more Tesla related content in the future. Also comment below how your range has been and things you personally do to help maximize it. The fourth thing that you can do to help maximize your range and to improve efficiency is to have the correct tire pressure on all four tires. Each Tesla is different for the PSI you have to set your tires at. You can find it on the door sill or in the owner's manual for your Tesla. Having the correct tire pressure in your Tesla is critical. 
It not only reduces the rolling resistance, but it also is beneficial for vehicle handling, safety, and just overall tire lifespan. Now with the weather getting colder, you may be noticing that your tire pressure is dropping quite a bit, especially if you leave your vehicle outside overnight. Make sure you maintain your tire pressure throughout the year to ensure safety and efficiency. An electric car is roughly three times more efficient than a comparable internal combustion engine vehicle. A change in tire pressure that equates to a 2% efficiency increase, hardly noticeable in an internal combustion engine vehicle, would have a 6% efficiency increase, very noticeable, in an electric car with all things being equal. It could be attributed to the fact that EVs are much heavier vehicles than internal combustion engine vehicles. Your driving behaviors and environment play a big role in achievable range. This is another thing to monitor in order to maximize your range. Frequent stop and go driving, inclement weather, and uphill driving put a natural strain on the battery. To maximize range, it's important to watch your driving speed and to utilize regenerative braking when possible. As you drive, be mindful of the common reasons your range may decrease more rapidly, such as high driving speeds, stop and go driving, short trips, uphill travel, inclement weather such as rain, snow, and headwinds. A lot of these go the same way for your internal combustion engine vehicles as well. You've probably noticed that your gas tank decreases faster when you're punching the gas pedal in your internal combustion engine vehicle. Hard acceleration and driving at high speeds really has an effect on the range of your Tesla. It is very tempting to drive fast and to punch it since Teslas have insane 0 to 60 speeds along with their instant torque. If you're looking to conserve some energy, maybe don't drive as spiritedly everywhere you go. The sixth thing that you can do to improve your range is to stay up to date on software releases. To improve range, Tesla doesn't generally introduce larger batteries. Instead, they make gains through incremental efficiency improvements with these software updates. In the past, Tesla has increased the rated range along with better performance and more horsepower through these software updates. You need a stable Wi-Fi connection in order to download these software updates. I've seen anywhere from 1-2 to two updates a month. It really depends on what improvements Tesla has to roll out and what all improvements Tesla has made. These over-the-air software updates are completely free. It's important to ensure that you stay up to date on all software updates, not to mention the latest cool features that you'll have, like how now you can view Sentry Mode live from your phone while your Tesla is parked. The seventh thing is to use an energy app. This energy consumption graph is an excellent way to predict your estimated range based on your own driving. The EPA estimated range is based on fixed EPA test data and not your personal driving patterns. When you pull up the energy graph, you can see the estimated range based on the previous 5, 15, and 30 miles. So if you've been punching the accelerator pedal a lot, you can see how it's affected on your estimated projected range. On the contrary, you can see how your regular driving has an impact on it as well. This energy app is a great way for you to visually see how you're doing on range and it's also a great way to see what you're doing right and what you could potentially improve on in order to maximize your range and efficiency. You've most likely heard this next tip a handful of times, but regen braking goes a long way. Try to get used to one pedal driving. It can be a challenge at first since you've been using a brake pedal in your internal combustion engine vehicle, but over time in your Tesla, it gets easier to time when your car is about to stop based on you letting off the accelerator pedal. Drive in a way that gets you the most energy recovery as possible. Some estimates put regen braking to around 30% of savings in energy consumption. This added energy is good for your range and not to mention the brake pads. Since you're going to be driving with primarily the accelerator pedal, you won't be using the brake pads as much anymore unless if you have to. My ninth tip is to reduce aerodynamic drag. Some of these options may be easier said than done, but every little bit can make a difference when it comes to EV efficiency. You'll probably bend these rules a bit more than others, but at least keep them in the back of your mind. Remove the roof racks or rear racks whenever they're not in use. Yes, this sounds like a bit of a chore, but you don't need your snowboard rack in July. Another tip for reducing aerodynamic drag is to adjust your ride height or put on auto if you have a Model S or Model X. Put your ride height to low or very low when you're driving at highway speeds. This lowers the height of your Tesla and as a result reduces aerodynamic drag. If you own a Model 3 or Model Y and have the aero wheels, put the covers back on. These maximize efficiency. If you don't like the look of them, you can either plasti dip or powder coat the covers to the color of your liking. But overall, these help anywhere from 5 to 10% on improving efficiency depending on the circumstances. 
The tenth and final thing I have to maximize your range and to improve your efficiency has to do with Vampire Drain. If you're not familiar with Vampire Drain, it's basically that your Tesla never completely goes to sleep. It contains a lot of computer systems that do various functions from monitoring the health of your battery, listening to see if Tesla is trying to connect the car over the air, and being ready to open the doors when you walk up to the car, along with many more things. The number of computer systems that are running can vary when the car is parked and the trade-off is usually between the responsiveness of your car and the amount of power consumed. You may sometimes see the car saying powering up or your app saying waking up car. Essentially you are waiting for the relevant computer to fire up. Disabling certain features when you don't need them can help mitigate some of the vampire drain such as sentry mode and cabin overheat protection. They can use a lot of energy when they are in use. While it's great to have a free dash cam that is constantly recording the surroundings of your Tesla, it's not the best option with respect to Vampire Drain. The car is kept at a high state of power consumption and is the single most important thing you should do to minimize battery drain. So there you have it. These are the top 10 things I highly recommend for you to maximize your range and to improve your efficiency. Some of these things may seem pretty straightforward in retrospect, but they do go a long way when implemented properly. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like if you want to and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated on my future videos. If I missed something or you have some tips that work well for you, comment them below. I'm interested in your feedback and ways to maximize your range on your Tesla. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.